Stuka Joe here for another live bomb run. Welcome everybody. It's 9 p.m. here in San Juan, Puerto Rico, 6 p.m. in the west coast of the United States. And I think it's 2 a.m. for one of the viewers. Must be in Europe. You're gonna get fired tomorrow if you keep on watching the show. <laughs> no, welcome to everybody. This is a work in progress and uh, we uh, are adding Little by little, more, more things to the show. It's always going to be one hour. And today we have a very interesting game. And if, uh, if you've noticed already, we're going to showcase one game uh, each time. And showcase means it's going to take like half the show, half, half an hour. And today's game, uh, you know which one that is. And that is this game, Donnerschlag. This is a game by VUCA Simulations. It's a, a new company relatively new and I think they're based in Bonn, Germany and the owner is the designer here, Patrick Gebhardt and they've uh, really impressed everybody with the quality, physical quality of the games and also the, with the gameplay. We're going to take a look at this particular game today. The reason uh, I was interested in this game was because first I saw an unboxing by Rough Swordsman Wargamer and Stalingrad is one of my favorite topics, so I, I ordered the game and then Vuka contacted me and I said, hey, if you just send me a copy, I can give that copy of the, away. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to give a copy of this game, Donnerschlag, today. And uh, I always like to set out the giveaway rules and uh, we will do that in a little while. And we have also Steve. Uh, I, I'm not going to Tempe this year, Steve. Sorry about that. <laughs> they changed uh, the convention to August and uh, my job won't, won't allow it this year. But maybe next year. And we have Tim Korchnoy. Nice to see you, Tim. We also have Mo from Mo's Game Table. Mo, great to see you. And uh, of course, Alan Salazar, one of our lucky winners from I think the last uh, bomb run. Andrew, Frank, we have also New York Raider fan. So we, we have uh, the usual suspects and uh, some more people. We got 24 people, so uh, it's growing. And so we're going to give this game away. But before I want to show you the giveaway rules, I can't ship games to Europe. So here are the rules for both giveaways. We're going to give away this game today and another game. You're asking, well, what's the other game? Let's keep it a mystery and make it interesting. But it's not going to be the CDG solo method. It's going to be an actual war game. So let's take a look at the giveaway rules. Participation is limited only to individuals in the United States and Puerto Rico. To participate, write the keyword shown during the live broadcast in the comment section. One winner per prize will be selected randomly during the broadcast. Within 24 hours, the winner must send an email to stukajoe at gmail.com stating the winner's YouTube handle and shipping address. An email with a verification code will be sent to the winner and the winner must enter the verification code in the comments section of the giveaway video. Upon winner confirmation, the prize will be mailed to the winner's address. 
So those are the rules. So let's give out the first keyword today. And it's going to be pretty obvious. Hashtag Donnerschlag. Now you got to spell it correctly. Come on. It's a tough word. It has two ends. Donnerschlag. So it's hashtag Donnerschlag. And after the showcase video, we will be uh, uh, giving away this game. So you got enough time to spell it correctly. I'm going to leave it there. And uh, so this is a game that the culprit for me buying it was Rough Swordsman Wargamer. He did a, a very nice unboxing and uh, it caught my attention because it is first Stalingrad. And, but it's not the, the, the fight for the city. It's the attempt to relieve the forces in the cauldron. Historically, there was uh, Operation Wintergewitter uh, done by the Germans, but they, the Germans in the cauldron never got the okay from Der Führer to uh, break out. So it never happened. And of course, we all know what happened. That was a turning point. Uh, in the Eastern Front and arguably World War II. So we have here the box. And one thing that, that impressed me is the quality of the components. This is a linen finished box. It is, I believe by our standards, about two inches. Very nicely done. It's a sturdy box. We have in the back here a description of um, of the map. The map has that um, feel or look of, uh, you know, winter terrain, which is nice. And then the, the units are color coded because here the activation system uses colors. So, and uh, so the colors you see, Soviet units come in the two types. Basically, the 51st Army units have this tan background. And then the other uh, units are from the uh, Forget the guard army here. The other Soviet army has that more like orange looking uh, background. Then the German units are in field gray and there are Romanians, two Romanian divisions like this unit that you see here is Romanian. So here's a, this, this game is a card driven game. I haven't uh, tried to see if uh, the uh, CDG solo system would work. I haven't given it a shot. But uh, it is a card-driven game. You play a, a card in your turn and you activate units. So it has 234 counters. They're pre-rounded. So no clipping needed here. And the player aid charts are just great. They're the same material as the counters. They're very thick and sturdy. So you got 126 cards, two setup displays in the old Avalon Hill type, which are very nice. I always like these uh, displays. So let's take a look at the components and then we'll give you a little summary of what players try to do in this game. Now, one thing is that I've read the, I've read the rules to the game and I'm going to film a, an edited video about the game that should come out uh, before the end of next weekend. And uh, so I haven't played the game yet, but I've read the rules and I like everything that I've seen. Uh, so far in the rules. So here you see the map. The map is, I have it oriented this way. It's uh, like, like a portrait orientation. Right? You see here. So I have it uh, placed on the table this way because if I place it that way, it's going to fall off the edge. So you have, for example, the German forces here start on the left edge from where I'm, I'm standing. And they have to break through the Soviet lines. And this, these units that you see here are 57th Army. That's the 57th Soviet Army, which is uh, in front of the uh, relieving force. And then the other, um, the other army that you see Soviet units is the one with the orange background. That's the second guards army is this one here. This one with the orange background. So up here is we have this space which represents the Stalingrad cauldron. And then 
there's going to come a point in time during the game between turn three and four. This is an eight turn game where the German player has to decide which uh, of these areas he's aiming for. And I think that what this represents is the coordination between uh, the forces in the cauldron and the rescuing forces, because it wasn't enough for this to be successful. The, the forces in the cauldron have to break out too. They, they can't just wait for the relief force to uh, go and, and pull them out. So in this game, the, when uh, you call as the Axis player in turn three or four, you call Operation Donnerschlag. And Operation Donnerschlag means uh, thunderclap. And when you call Operation Donnerschlag, you place that marker that I just showed you, you place it here in this box. And at the end of the turn, it's gonna start moving. And the game will end here. And you see that five in a special background. If the Germans play a specific card, which is the air, I forget the name of the card. Let me see if I can pull it around. Let's pull it here. If there's a special activation card, if you play that, you can extend it one more turn. You're giving the forces in the cauldron one more turn. But when you declare Operation Donner Slag and place the marker here, you also have to choose which of the three areas you are aiming for. And of course, what we use here are these uh, chits that say meeting zone. It's, that's where the forces in the cauldron and the forces, the relieving forces are gonna meet. And of course, there's only one, which is the meeting zone. The other two are dummies because the Soviet player will not know that. So let's say we place the meeting point is going to be here. Of course, I know that because I'm the Axis player. And the Soviet doesn't know that. And, and of course, right off the bat, you're going, oh, uh, it's not very solitaire friendly. Well, that particular mechanic is not very solitaire friendly. I, I picked up the game because it's a Stalingrad game that fits on my, on my table. It doesn't have 60 pages of rules and 2,000 pieces. So that's one element, of course, that also provides uncertainty. So when you're going to play this game, all the zones are going to be different. And depending on your advance during turns one, two, and three, you can pick the appropriate zone. Now, there doesn't look like there's much in the way of the German forces. But of course, the Soviet forces are not all on the map. <laughs> that's, uh, of course, there's Soviet reinforcements. And that's another interesting aspect of this game. There's Soviet reinforcements that are that will enter at certain times in the game, like your regular uh, war game, right? You see here, let me get my forceps here. You got here on turn two, you get these units, these two uh, armored units. And then also turn two forces. So the Soviets get a lot of forces in turn two, turn three, turn six and turn seven okay so the germans they 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 don't have a lot of time to waste they got to start pushing but that's not all there's a series of forces that begin in an opaque cup there's infantry forces infantry units like this one here and by the way the number on the left is the combat factor number on the right is the movement factor so this uh, is a reinforcement, nothing to write home about, but it, you know, it, it occupies space and it has a zone of control. So you have a two strength reinforcement. And there's also here, when you may draw, if you're the Soviet player, you may draw a snafu marker, which means, well, that you didn't pull any unit from the cup. But when do you pull units from this cup and also, there's another cup with tank units and also snafu markers. When, as the German, when the Axis player rolls very poorly on the combat table, you're going to see that those units come in. 
And here we have the combat results table. And it's fairly typical, odds-based. Let me get that out of the way here. So it's, uh, let me see my camera just froze on me just a second. Okay, we're back here, here we are, okay. So, it's a fairly standard combat results table. No, no, most the craziest odds you find there is a 1.5 to 1. And you see the results are uh, one step loss, the number is a step loss, and who retreats. So that's very straightforward. And then there's combat modifiers, tank bonus, combined arm bonus, and terrain. Now, you see there's two rows there in red, and that's when that that's the wrinkle that i like about this game more uncertainty if you are the axis player in an attack and you roll a modified one or less so if you, then what's going to happen is a soviet ad hoc infantry unit is going to enter the game and the infantry unit is uh, pulled from this cup here on the left you pull an infantry unit now doesn't only apply to the Axis, this possible uh, bad luck uh, reinforcement. If the Soviets attack and they roll a six, then Axis alarm group units enter. And the Axis player has uh, an opaque cup here, that we see here, also with some snafu markers and basically these alarm group units. And you see the symbol on the left that has that, uh, those diamonds and the plus, it means it's a free stacking unit. So you're going, yeah, it's a one unit. Yeah, but it's a one unit that you can free stack. And sometimes one combat factor will change the whole equation there. So these alarm group units enter when the Soviets roll a natural six. So you have that element of uncertainty baked also in addition to the combat result units entering play. Now here we have and, and this is one thing I wanted to show you the player aids here. This is not cardstock this is the same material as the counters you see. This is made to take a pounding <laughs> And then you have on the back side, you have a nice extended sequence of play. So it looks, it looks uh, complicated, but it's re it really isn't. So back here, we have the, the player aid. We have a shorter sequence of play here on the left side. And we have our terrain effects chart. The terrain, there's not a lot of types of terrain. I mean, it's a winter game, so you're going to have clear. There's minor village, train station, towns, cities, unbridged rivers. Uh, armored units, they have to cross on bridges. They just cannot uh, cross an unbridged river hex side. You have minor, major roads, and rails. Okay. We have the effect on combat, regular, normal stuff that we are used to. Then we have a really handy rule summary on this right hand side. Stacking maximum of two, headquarters don't count nor do alarm group units. And we have uh, command is uh, one way in which you can activate units. We're going to see that very soon because that's another element of uncertainty in this game how units are activated and it is a card driven game and, we, and I haven't shown you the cards yet. Okay. We got Kilroy's here. Nice to see you Kilroy. Okay. So this is a card driven game and uh, there's two types of cards in the game. You have uh, what is called combat cards which we use before and sometimes after combat and then we have the activation cards 
And even the way that both sides activate their units is different. And I think it's intentionally done so to demonstrate the more rigid Soviet command structure compared to the Germans, which you're going to see the Germans have a special rule which they can activate all units within a four hex radius. But we'll, we'll check that. We'll check the Soviets first. See, so here we have a, an activation card. So during the action round, a player selects a card, and let's say the Soviets select this card. So they can select to, to, uh, to uh, any units, gray colored units belonging either to, either to the second guard or 50 first army or well, i believe this is they can play their stavka card so this is another thing i'll talk about later so here you see this gray color right so let's freeze the camera just a second there and let's go to the units of the 52nd army and here we go you see them let's focus yeah, that thing keeps appearing okay you see, the units have across their unit type symbol, there's a, a line there. This line here, right? you see, this is a yellow line. And you see that units that belong to the same formation, they have different colors. So, for example, here you have the 91st division, and you have a unit with a blue line and another with a red line. So here, what this card allows us is to activate gray units of any army. So they can be from different formations, but they're going to be scattered. So for example, let's search for one of these gray units. I think I saw one. And these are going to be scattered. Well, these, that, that's green. That's red. That's blue over there. Not a lot of gray units. Let me see over here. No, these are blue. And I can't find any gray units. <laughs> hmm? Gray units of either army, so. No, I can't find any. There's more units out in the, um, that haven't come in yet, so. So this card may not be very useful at this time. Let me see. Units of one color. Oh, this is this gray or green? <laughs> I think this is green. That's why. Green units. <laughs> Gotta work on my lighting system here. So let me let me freeze here. So I think I saw a green unit down here. So that particular unit that is here. Let me see. I think it's green, yeah. That unit could be activated. So there's, there's going to be a few units on different for, uh, from different formations. So it's not going to be very helpful. But then there's also another option that it can be from or all units of one formation. Now formations are different. Formations are denoted here on the color on the counter. Let me see if I can get rid of that thing that I wrote here. There you go. You see that 302? That's the formation. 302, 302nd uh, Rifle Division. So you can activate all units from the 302nd Rifle Division. You see there's one green stripe unit there. Uh, red here, green, yellow. 302nd. So you probably want to activate formation Units in formation. See, here's the 4th Cavalry Division, and so forth. So that's one way that Soviet units can be activated. And when we look at the other cards that we have here, okay, we have our famous green, not gray, blue, blue units of one army, See, this one doesn't, doesn't give you the, the choice of formation. So you can see that the command structure for the Soviets is going to be more like rigid. Yellow units. 
and yellow. And there's uh, th these are the ones that I drew to start the game. You start with a hand of five activation cards. Now the German way of activating is slightly different. It's also based on formations. So for example, here we have the German card. So you can activate here units of the six Panzer Division. Six Panzer Division, any formation. It can be German or Romanian. Any formation, and it's those are gray colored units of any formation. And again, Panzer Division, this, this Panzer Division, it's, uh, this is the 23rd Panzer Division, okay? But this is one way. You can also play a card and the Germans have what is called the Schwerpunkt, Schwerpunkt marker. And Schwerpunkt, I had to look it up in the dictionary because, let's see, where is the Schwerpunkt? Schwerpunkt, main effort. Okay, let me decline that call. Okay. So, here we go. Let's take a look at the Schwerpunkt marker. Let me see if I can find it. I put it somewhere. Here it is. This is the Schwerpunkt marker. Let me change cameras here. Okay. Sí, que pase. Bien. Got somebody at the gate. Okay, we'll continue. The Schwerpunkt marker is a special way in which the Germans can activate their units. You place this marker on any German unit and uh, you can activate any unit that is in command within four hexes. So let's say that I place this marker here. <clears throat> right? I can activate any unit that is within four hexes of that marker, but the unit has to be in command. You see the headquarters unit there, that Panzer 23rd, 23rd Panzer Division headquarters. You see it has a four. That means it has a command range of four. So I can activate this unit is within command range of the of that headquarters, this one too, but I can activate Romanians. Of course, they have to be within command of their headquarters. Here you see the Romanian 6th Division has a command range of 3. But if you organize things well as the Axis player, you can move a lot of units using the Schwerpunkt marker. It's going to burn one of those cards, but you use the Schwerpunkt marker, and then each turn you just uh, designate a new unit and you place it at the beginnings. So the first thing you do during the turn is to place the Schwerpunkt marker there. Now, because you are using the Schwerpunkt marker, that's one thing that I find interesting. And that's the first thing that uh, happens in the turn, actually. First thing that, that in the admin phase, you place the marker. The Soviets know that you're going to be uh, making a big effort there. So if you place a marker here, the Soviets know that something's big is coming in that area. So that's the downside. But I mean, it, I think that reflects, uh, you know, intelligence and preparation. When you have a big offensive, the enemy kind of knows because you're preparing heavily on one side. So that's how the Germans also activate. Now, to win the game, the Germans have to enter this area here but there's a special rule for that and um, let me take a look at that just a second because that's another thing that i like okay we talked about when the german player declares donnerschlag this marker is going to start moving at the end of the turn and the game will end here in turn four unless the german plays luftflot four and uh, that would unlock box five. So Luftflot four 
That's an event card. I think that's a combat event card. And it's probably in the... Let me see if I can find it here somewhere. Luftflot 4, here it is. This card. German player has to play this as a general event, and that means you flip the Donnerschlag marker to 6th Army survival side. So we would uh, flip the marker to its other side, and it would read what you see there. Sixth Army Survival. That means you have one more shot at liberating the uh, Sixth Army. Now you see, for example, in these cards, which are part of the combat events, most of them have this die depiction. And most of the cards have two events. See, for example, this is a general event, and it says when you can play it before combat, and it just affects one combat, but you, got it. you have to roll a die. You have to roll four or less. If you roll five or more, nothing happens. See? And the same thing here. You have a tactical event. This one gives you a plus or minus two die roll uh, combat uh, uh, die roll modifier. But you have to roll five or less. So there's always a chance of not working those cards. But there's an exception to them. And that's where this... Uh, Stavka space there for the Soviets and this uh, OKH space that you see there for the Germans come into play. You can, for example, while uh, during your turn, you may save one of these cards. Let's say the, uh, these are the, the Germans, let's say the Soviets have uh, some combat cards and they say, well, I want to save this card for use later. So you place it face down here in the Stavka space. Now, later you can play it, but it has the added bonus that, oh, I wasn't showing you guys this. Okay, let's say you want to save a card you can pick a card and save it in the Stavka box for the Soviets. Place it there. And uh, then later during the turn, you can play the card for the, one of the two purposes. And you don't have to uh, roll on the dice, roll the dice. It immediately takes effect, the event. So that's the advantage of the card in the Stavka box or the OKH box. And uh, another element that it's a, a really nice uh, element of uncertainty, of course, if you're going to solo the game, that's a challenge that it presents for solo play. So when you look here at the map, there's not a lot of units. There's going to be reinforcements. So it's, it's not a counter heavy game. Stacking is two units plus headquarters and alarm group units. So it looks like a very elegant design. I've read the rules and I'm going to film that um, that uh, example of play. It's going to be an example of play video. I didn't show you the rule book. So let's take a look, a brief look at the rule book. So here's the rule book. It is glossy paper. But there's a lot of illustrations. See, you have here a lot of uh, description of what the numbers mean. There is, as you see there, there's, um, you have a bonus for combined arms and tank bonus also. And that's, it's very simple. It gives you a column shift if you have combined arms, another column shift favorable if you have a tank bonus. You have a picture of the markers, the cards, sequence of play and you have here the various ways you can activate units so I'm going to be doing a video showing the examples on the that are found in the rule book that way I can't screw things up and uh, here you have an example a supply example you have to trace supply to uh, various edges and they are well uh, illustrated here you see for example this red edge is the Soviet 
supply edge. And then you have here the axis supply edge here, in this color here, this dark green, and it runs all the way back over there. So uh, very well illustrated rule book. And uh, here we have a very uh, well illustrated combat example. So I'll be adding that to the video. Then you have historical notes. It's always nice. You have a map, some photographs. And this runs about five, six pages. And of course, designer notes by the two designers. And you have a setup uh, aid there, which is always very nice. And an index, which is always good. So that's the rule book. And that is Donnerschlag by VUCA Simulation. So we are going to be uh, giving away this game. So we have, uh, it's a very nice looking game. And uh, I want to thank VUCA for sending, sending it to me so I can give it away to you guys. So let's, let's bring the screen with the... Um, the raffle okay just a sec okay and we have 19 entries now i always say uh, here uh, the the keyword always has to do something with the game because maybe you have the game maybe I know VUCA sent the game to uh, everybody and his mother, <laughs> but uh, maybe you have the game and uh, you don't need an extra copy. I mean, who, who buys, I don't know, four copies of the same game? You know, it's kind of, that's kind of weird. So uh, we got 19 entries and uh, I always like to... Uh, remind myself of the words that Jack Rady said. You know, if you don't like the game, you're not interested, or you have already the game, remember what Jack said. Don't be a schmuck. No, don't be a schmuck. So uh, just go for it if you're interested in it. I want to make sure that this game finds a home and it will be well appreciated. So let's do the raffle right now. We have 20 entries, had enough time to spell the Donnerschlag, I mean, guys, you gotta, it has to have some effort, you know? <laughs> so Donnerschlag, so we're going to give out the game now. And uh, here we go. We got 21 people. Let me, okay, let's wait. Okay, let me wait just a couple of uh, more seconds here. I'll give a close-up here. We have the game in the insert. And, oh, I have, and, and, uh, just to show you, the game that we will be giving is not the one that you're seeing because that's my copy. This is the copy that we'll be giving away. And if you've seen videos by my fellow YouTubers, VUCA seals the games with these uh, stickers. It's a sealed game, brand new. It's pretty heavy. It has a lot of good stuff in it. So... That's what will be going your way. Okay, so we have 23. So here we go, okay? Let's see, and the winner. Oh, I gotta give it, hit it here. One, two, and here we go. Who will take Donnerschlag home? And the winner is... Mo! Yeah, Mo, you don't have it? <laughs> Mo, you won it. So great, Mo. Congratulations, Mo. Mo, Mo, I think you know the drill. Send me an email to stukajo at gmail.com with your mailing address, uh, your, what, your YouTube handle, which I know already. Then I'll give you a keyword. Just put it on the, make sure it's you and not somebody pretending to be you. I'll give you a, a confirmation code word put it on the uh, comment section and it'll be shipping your way tomorrow. I'll be shipping this tomorrow. 
So congratulations to Mo. And uh, man, this, that, that is so cool. So let's see if we can go back here to our... See how I can go back here. And we're back here to the table. Okay, and now... That was cool. Now... We are going to go to the new section. And this is a new section called A Blast from the Past. I got a ton of old games. And I've been playing war games or games about war since I was about nine years old. I, I have a lot of the really old games. And I want to show you today a very special one. And uh, you're going to laugh when you see it. But all of us started somewhere. Okay? So, but I need like a minute to set it up. So I did this um, intro. Um, so I'm going to play the intro. And while you watch and listen to the intro, I'm going to be shuffling things around here. And uh, we'll see. The blast from the past. So I'll see you in about a minute. Okay? And this is Hit the Beach. I know you're laughing. Eh, that's not a war game. Well, when I played it the first time, when I was nine years old, I thought it was. I really thought this was a war game. And uh, of course, this is not the copy that I had when I was nine years old. I was able to get this copy about 20, 20 no, like 15 years ago, more or less. And uh, this is a really, really old game. Yes, I bet you it's going to be... Uh, a game that maybe some of you guys weren't even born. So it came in this huge flat box here. It has a nice picture here of a, an assault by these uh, soldiers here. I don't, they look like army to me. And it's part of their Command Decision series. And uh, there, you're going to see there's other games here in the Command Decision series. I had them all. I played them all. And that's before I, I discovered Avalon Hill and SPI. We had Hit the Beach. Now, where are the rules for Hit the Beach? They're in the box. <laughs> and uh, if, uh, if you think that to, by today's standards, there's a lot of hype when a new game comes out. I was, I was surprised to, to find what I did here. Look at, look at the way this reads. This exciting war game is based on the strategy of the of the Pacific campaigns of World War II. The play features an amphibious landing to establish beachheads, deploys combined forces of air, naval, marine, and army units, and allows several alternate routes to victory. So, it, if, and you think, wow, this, this sounds like a war game, but <laughs> it's really you just roll a die and you have to kill the Japanese defender by exact count. There's, and the combined arms, you're gonna see how that works. But let's take a look at what else was inside the box before we take a look at the components. This is the insert, and you see the other games of the series, Battle Cry, which is uh, actually a, was a nice conga line uh, battle uh, procedure there. Broadsides, and actually broadsides had some uncertainty. It had those... Uh, 
the, here it had some cannons and you had to go through and see if the, the cannon read hit or miss. And then my favorite of all the uh, Milton Bradley games was Dogfight. And you had your six planes, if you're for the Germans, six for the Americans. And you had to fight, you had to cross this line here uh, in order to, to change your hand of cards if, you, if your hand of cards was bad. So these were the Milton Bradley, and there's another one who that's, that's not here. And I have them all, but the only one I have the box, original box, is this one. The other one that's not here is Skirmish, which is actually not bad, you know. Still by today's standards, it's pretty interesting. It is asymmetric, and we'll take a look at that one some other day. And the pieces came here, and one really, really cool thing with these games is this booklet that it brought, Hit the Beach, American Heritage. So this, this is a really, really cool booklet. It has a summary of Pacific Campaign and a full color. Well, there goes a full color. Some black and white. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I remember this. This was great. I mean, you had these, uh, this literature, this map. It looks so it looks so awesome when you're nine years old and you get something like this. You go, wow, man, this is really cool. So this is the companion booklet. You see the Kickstarters these days, the companion books that they bring in. This was the companion booklet. And what year was this game published? Let me see if it says it. I know where it says it. It's in the box. Let me. So it's down here 1965 and I, I must have played it like in 1969 I was eight years old so it's in, this game is 1965 so let's take a look at how you say mo what you get in the box <laughs> you get this map mounted map board you got a generic and completely symmetric island in the Pacific with a completely symmetric Japanese defense. You have the two defenders here, each on a beach hex, and then three spaces away, another Japanese defender. And the same uh, thing happens over here with the blue and the black beach. So how do you win this game? This is a game that you can play up to four players and each player has uh, an American force, which is differently colored. You have the red forces, blue forces over there, black and green. And then you roll a die. And where's the die here? Uh, I have to pull a die. Oh, here it is. This is the, uh, the authentic die that came with the game. I remember this because this thing, if it gets wet, it'll just explode. It's like carton or something. So you have the die. And uh, let's say you roll a three and you want to eliminate the defender on the beach. To do that, you have to get your plane and your ship here. And only a Marine by exact count can eliminate that defender. So let's, if you roll a three, you move the Marine three spaces here. But if you would roll a six, and that's where it gets interesting. Then you can move your plane or ship here. So you got to roll two sixes and eventually get the Marine to, uh, to land by exact count. You would need a three, eliminate the Japanese defender, and then comes the stabbing in the back part. Then let's say the blue player is going to come this way. So you put this Japanese defender here in this atoll. So the blue player has a harder time uh, getting in and if the blue player is already about to go in Then you can place the defender here in any space. The only rule is uh, the only exception. You cannot place this a Japanese defender in another beach space that happens to be empty So the first player that reaches Here wins the game and that is basically hit the beach. It's uh, you roll a die and uh, moves are pretty obvious. So there's not a lot of uh, decision making. <laughs> and uh, this was before 
For me, this was before my first real war game, which was France 1940 and Avalon Hill. So, uh, but I know many, many of you guys encountered these uh, Milton Bradley games. And they were pretty cool, I mean, for the time. So this gives you an idea, you know, how much games have evolved. And of course, a game like this today would be like, uh, I, don't, I don't think it would be published because it doesn't present much of a challenge. But that's because games have evolved in such a way that even uh, simple games and games for beginners are much more complex than Hit the Beach. But I wanted to show you guys Hit the Beach because it's, for, for me, it was the start and what ignited the passion for war-related games and, of course, war games. And we will be doing this same drill every time we have a bomb run. I'll be pulling out one of those old games and we'll be taking a look at it. So uh, let's now announce the second raffle. Let me pull that out. And uh, this is uh, another Stalingrad game. And this is part of the, um, how do you say, the uh, 21 important battles of history. This is Turning Point Simulations. And this is a game that came out a while ago. I think this is, uh, I don't know. It's been a while, and I did a video a long time ago, I think in 2016. And I'm going to type the keyword, and this one's going to be easy. It's going to be simply Stalingrad. So this for this one, you just hashtag Stalingrad. Let me write it here, too. I could have done this before. Let me see here, edit. So it's going to be hashtag Stalingrad. Well, let's show that. Second keyword, and this is a pretty cool game. It has some displays off map and you're tracing the advance of the I mean, the game's called Stalingrad but it's really about the fall blue campaign and you have the German units here and the Soviets here and you have some off map boxes and here of course you got Stalingrad so this was the number one volume number one in turning point simulations uh uh, collection of the 20 most important battles and if you bought all 20 uh, then and only then they would send to you this one which I'll probably do an unbox unboxing soon they would send you this one which is we are all mortal the Cuban Missile Crisis designed by Paul Rohrbach I haven't opened it yet because I may do an unboxing on this one, which is kind of weird. This they only sell, no, they only give this one to the people who bought all twenty. I mean, why wouldn't you want to sell a game <laughs> you know, to the rest of the people? I don't know, but that's the way it is. So I recently uh, wrote to uh, Turning Point Simulation and said, "Hey, I picked up all 20. So we will be giving away." This Stalingrad game, let's get back here to the comment section. So let's see where I put this here. And so while you're typing, for those of you who are interested, the show so far has this showcase scenario or section. Now the whole idea of the showcase scenario eventually is to bring to you someone who knows something about the game. Uh, somebody who's not me. So let me give you an example. For example, let's say that some company, let's say Flying Pig Games publishes a game on the Civil War 
some random battle, let's say like Champion Hill, for example, right? So, and I probably pick up the game because there's not a, games, a, lot, not a lot of games on Champion Hill. I pick up the game and uh, I say, hey, who's the designer? Let's say it's, let's say Herman Lutman's the designer, right? So I, I can, I can uh, write to Herman, Herman, why don't you be my guest in a showcase video of Champion Hill? And if he says yes, then in that edition, you got two people talking about the game. I can concentrate on moving the camera around. And of course, I, I would have read the rules. And then you have the designer talking about the game. Now, this that I told you about Herman is totally hypothetical. I haven't approached him on the subject, but it's something that I would like to do. And that, that would be the purpose of that particular section to have somebody, it doesn't have to be always the designer, it could be a developer, it could even be somebody who loves the game and has played it repeatedly. These games, you know, they have their nuances and, and it's sometimes we're showing off a game, it's, it's good to have somebody who knows and has played the game a lot of times. So that's what we're aiming for. And uh, another section that I plan to introduce is also eventually uh, an unboxing with also a guest, and a guest can be any of you guys. Uh, the only requirement, you have to have some headphones because otherwise the, the feedback is gonna shoot this whole thing down. So that's gonna be eventually coming in. But uh, for now, that's what we have. We have the showcase, we're gonna have the, uh, how do you call it, the blast from the past, and me talking to you, killing some time while you're typing the word here. Now let's, oh, I did also a video for the giveaway so uh we've been running now for how long 58 minutes okay so let's i should have shown you this one for the first giveaway but it's okay this gives me like a one minute break so here we go i'm gonna show you the intro for the giveaway and then we'll do the giveaway so here we go Okay, and here we are, and, and I'm <laughs> still switching here. Uh, show screen. Oh, okay, now we are here. Okay, now here we are. Uh, that's not the screen I want. Just a second, guys. Still get, trying to get a hang of this thing. Share screen, window. Now, here we are, okay. Okay, here we are, Stalingrad. We got 20 entries, okay? We've been running for one hour or so. This one, that, that's easy to spell. <laughs> so we're going now with, uh, with the draw here. So here we go, guys. Best of luck. Let's see who gets Stalingrad. And the winner is, the winner is, Kilroy was here. Kilroy, are you sure you haven't unboxed this one? <laughs> Congratulations, Kilroy. This one is going your way. And uh, man, this is, people are gonna say this thing was rigged because the people who are winning are YouTubers, you know, <laughs> what's going on? So no, it's great. It's great, congratulations. See how I get back here? And we're here again. So that's it. We have our two winners. Mo got uh, Donnerschlag and Kilroy got Stalingrad. You know, okay. So uh, congratulations to both of you. I'll send you, uh, send me the email with your handle and mailing address. I'll send you the keyword. Make sure Kilroy gets his game and Mo and not some impersonator <laughs> gets his game. And then We'll be shipping those tomorrow. So uh, I wanna thank you. I'm gonna, I'm trying to do these, if I can, every week, but there's still a lot of technical stuff. Every time it's less technical stuff that, that I have to prepare because all these settings, you know, they get saved. So it's just a matter of pressing buttons, but pressing the right buttons because this is a live broadcast. So I wanna thank all of you. And uh, it was great seeing you guys again. 
and uh, I'm gonna check your comments any things that you would like to see any ideas it will I'm, uh, I'm all ears it's always gonna be a one-hour show I like to keep it one hour because it's I think it's watchable more watchable later one hour than three hours and I'm trying to keep the downtime as low as possible but right now you only have two sections but eventually we can do uh, more sections so it's great to see you guys again and uh, I'll see you in the next one and uh, thanks for showing up and uh, let me see if how I can get I can get these comments up. <laughs> okay thanks guys and uh, I'll see you later. Let me see with what can I say goodbye to you guys. Uh, let's say goodbye to with the blast from the past intro, which is new thing, and it lasts a minute, okay? So thanks again to each and every one of you, and I see you in the next bomb run. Take care.